ever walk by a skyscraper and wonder, how does that thing even stand up? Or a bridge for that matter, right? Exactly. It's mind boggling. So much going on underground, hidden from view. Like literally the foundation of our built world. Which is what we're diving into today. The fascinating world of board piles. Board piles, they're these, well, from what I've been reading, they're these super strong underground columns that support these massive structures. Yeah, they're key for anything large scale, especially when you've got iffy ground to work with. Iffy, like. Like soil that's not exactly rock <laughs> solid, you know. Could be sand, clay, anything that wouldn't be a stable base on its own. And we've got this, let's see, boardpile.pdf you sent over, which seems to be like the Bible on this stuff. It's a good one. Covers the whole process. And believe me, it's more involved than just digging a hole and filling it with concrete. Oh, I bet. So where do we even begin? Well, step one, you got to know what you're dealing with underground. Makes sense. Can't build on a mystery, right? Exactly. Yeah. Soil analysis is crucial. Different soils have wildly different properties. Right. Like building on sand versus building on, say, clay. Those are two very different things. Night and day. The type of soil dictates the entire approach. So once they've, what, analyzed the dirt, then they bring in the heavy machinery. Oh, yeah. Time for the big guns. We're talking massive drills with these augers, like giant corkscrews, to create the pile boreholes. Those things are huge GE. Seeing them in action is kind of awe-inspiring, not going to lie. And this is where that soil analysis comes in. Choosing the right auger for the job is critical. You've got continuous flight augers, good for sandy soils, act like a giant screw to move the excavated material up. Then you've got bucket augers, better for clay, literally scooping the stuff out. So even just picking the right tool for the job depends on what's down there. Absolutely, and it only gets more specialized from there. Okay, so say they've analyzed the soil, chosen the right auger, drilled this perfectly sized hole. What's next? Because what's stopping the hole from just collapsing back in on itself? That's where the real ingenuity comes in. They pump something called bentonite slurry into the drilled hole. And bentonite slurry, that sounds intense. It's actually pretty cool. And think of it like a special kind of mud, almost like a milkshake in consistency. A milkshake for holding up a building. Okay, I'm listening. It's not just any mud. It's heavier than water, which is key. Creates what we call a hydrostatic pressure gradient. Hydro what now? Basically, the pressure from the mud counteracts the pressure from the surrounding soil, preventing the hole from collapsing. But it's a delicate balance. If the slurry level drops too low, or if there's too much water seeping in from the surrounding soil... Sounds like trouble. You risk a cave-in. It's a constant dance of adjustments and monitoring. So you've got this stable hole held in place by this special mud. Yeah. What happens next? Now we're talking reinforcement. Time for the backbone of the board pile. Let me guess. More specialized equipment. You bet. A reinforcing cage made of steel bars sometimes thicker than your arm is lowered into the slurry-filled hole. This cage provides the tensile strength that concrete on its own lacks, makes the pile able to handle immense weight and pressure. So it's not just about being strong, it's about being strong in the right ways. Exactly. Got to account for all the forces at play. Compression, tension, everything. This is making those construction sites I see every day seem way more impressive. It's easy to forget how much engineering goes into every single step. Okay, so we've got a reinforced hole held open by milkshake mud. Bring on the concrete. Almost. <laughs> and even the concrete pouring is a meticulous process. Really? I figured they just, you know, pour it in and call it a day. Not quite. It's pumped in from the bottom of the hole, slowly displacing the bentonite slurry as it rises. Why from the bottom? Seems counterintuitive. That ensures a completely solid pile, no air pockets or weak spots, from the very bottom to the top. Quality control all the way. So even something as seemingly simple as pouring concrete has these crucial details to get right. Every step of the way. That's incredible. So much for just being a hole in the ground. This boardpile.pdf really opened my eyes. Right. And the best part is this whole process lets us build these incredible structures in places we never could otherwise. We're talking skyscrapers, bridges, all built on what are essentially really, really deep concrete posts. Exactly. It's a testament to how engineering and ingenuity can quite literally shape the world around us. Speaking of shaping the world, this PDF mentioned bridges, skyscrapers. Are there any limits to what you can build with board piles? Like, could we make, I don't know, an underwater city using this stuff? Now, that's a question to ponder. While it's incredibly versatile, the effectiveness of the board pile technique does depend on several factors. Things like water depth, the makeup of the soil, and of course, the scale of the project all come into play. So while we might not have underwater cities just yet, 
I'm still betting on human ingenuity to keep pushing the limits of what's possible. Me too. The next time you walk by a construction site, take a moment to appreciate what's going on beneath the surface. It's a hidden world of engineering marvels, all thanks to board piles. Absolutely. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive. Until next time.